Good evening to the people that are connected from Europe and Middle East and also Asia. And good morning to those that are connected from America. Welcome to this webinar shared by Technalia. Uh, in Technalia Live, uh, we have the opportunity to know different technologies and their applications to the industry. Uh, I'm Ivona de Chalde. Sorry. I'm Ivona Rechalde, Director of the Digital Lab Services in Technalia. Our focus in Technalia is the generation of opportunities for the companies through technologies that are in different degrees of maturity, always searching that the applied research and the technological de development will be a competitive advantage for the companies that work with us. And in the case of the Lab Services Division, we offer our knowledge and facilities to specify, develop, test, and certify the different products that the manufacturers are developing. And today's webinar is a good example of that because the technologies of power line communications are evolving because they are improving in speed, in latency, and in availability. And sometimes we discover that there are several problems related to noises that can be uh, avoided but uh, we need some methodologies to do that. And this is part of the webinar that we will see uh, today. First of all, uh, today we have the pleasure to talk to Oriol Mune. Oriol is our international director, the international director of the Lab Services Division, the laboratories in Technalia. And he has a large experience in very big international projects in Europe Latin America and Middle East. Uh, all of them very close to the testing methods, to the laboratories and to the ways that things can be tested uh, to make the new technologies easy. Um, so, well, Oriol will, will share with us his knowledge in, in this field of the noises in PLC communications. At the end of the session, uh, we will have a short time for questions. So please, uh, you can launch these questions along the presentation by uh, using the chat that you can see on the right side of the screen. Uh, we will share, we will answer some of them at the end of the webinar, and we will answer also by email the rest in the case that uh, they, in the case that they will be a lot. Uh, so, Oriol. I give to you the control and the war. Uh, it's your time. Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Oriol Munne from Technalia and it will be my pleasure to present you this technical webinar called uh, Noise Problems in PLC Communications. How to prevent them to optimize your PLC network. This technical webinar uh, is structured in four different chapters. The first one uh, will provide you some basic concepts on power line communications. Later, uh, we will introduce to you two different methodologies. The first one uh, is in charge of analyzing if a network is suitable or not for PLC technologies. And if so, which is the different or the type of PLC technology that could be used in a network according to the disturbances that are registered or that are present in the network. The second methodology uh, is related to find out where a noise comes from, because sometimes it is not difficult to filter a noise, but the problem there is how to detect where the disturbances come from. Finally, uh, in the last point, I will introduce some services provided by Technalia through the NOISIC platform. The PLC systems operate by adding modulated carrier signals over the wiring system. Those can be used for many, many different applications or use cases, for instance, by the electrical distribution companies for the telemanagement of the devices, and uh, the smart meters could be a good example for that. 
We can see this technology is also used uh, by the final users at home to distribute the internet signal around the home. And we can also discover use cases using electrical cables in other facilities. And besides, what we see is that there are differences between technologies depending, for example, on the frequency bands they use, depending on the frequency bandwidth, or even depending on the modulation. Nevertheless, a common point in all these use cases is that the wireless system used by the PLC technology has been designed for power distribution and has been designed to work perfectly well at 50 or 60 Hertz, depending on the country, of course. So this wiring system can have some limitations for higher frequencies because it has not been designed for high frequency transmissions. Besides, some disturbances that do not affect to the power system can affect to the communications. As the mean, which is the cables, the devices already in the network and the connectors, have not been designed for PLC users, the propagation problems can be a limiting factor in some networks. PLC do not require the installation of dedicated network cabling, but cables must transmit correctly the signal. Data rates and distance limits vary widely over many PLC standards. Higher data rates generally imply shorter ranges. Many countries regulate power line communications considering the devices as radio transmitters, but the regulation depends on each country. For example, in the EU, the PLC emissions are regulated by the EMC directive. This means that the PLC devices have to comply with the essential requirements of such directive. And as a consequence of that, PLC technologies can be used in any frequency range if the essential requirements are met or are complied. In the examples that we're going to share in this presentation, we will focus mainly in the electrical distribution networks. The main reason to focus on such is that they are the most complex networks with a lot of cables, a lot of connections, and a lot of devices connected. So this is also the reason why the noises affect so much to the PLC technologies used in the electrical distribution networks. When PLC technology is used by utilities, we could say that there are two kinds of devices that are connected. The first ones are devices that are controlled by the user of these PLC communications. And the second ones are the ones that are not, not controlled by this user, but are connected because of their use of power supply. This second type of devices includes all the ones that the users are connecting at home, in the industry, or in the commercial premises. In the electrical distribution network, the number of uncontrolled devices is much, much higher than the number of controlled devices. Once we understood this point, we can go through the factors that are relevant for the propagation of the signals. And of course, also of the noises in the distribution electrical networks. We will explain three main factors, the attenuation, the changes of impedance, and the electrical disturbances or electrical noises. The attenuation can be produced by control devices or by uncontrolled devices. In the controlled devices, the attenuation changes depending on the type and distance of the cables, depending on the attenuation of the connections, which includes the attenuation of the connectors, but also the attenuation due to variations on the quality of the installation. That the attenuations due to the connected devices, as for example, is the case of the smart meters, and the effect of signal coupling between cables. This last uh, point, this last case, can produce other effects in the transmitted signal because a coupled signal can be delayed in phase and the effect of coupling can affect in different ways to different frequencies. The attenuation can be produced also by uncontrolled devices. In this case, depending on the type and distance of uncontrolled cables, depending also on the attenuation of devices connected by other users, 
normally the final users of the power supply and also affected by the impedance coupling of the devices to the network. The second factor are the changes of impedances because of the different elements that are connected and disconnected continuously in the network, which produce fast jams in the attenuation and also other effects over the injection and reception of the signal. Last, the third factor is the noise, the electrical disturbances that are injected by all kinds of elements connected to the electrical networks and that act as a noise that disturbs the power line communications. A signal transmitted from a data concentrator to an electrical emitter can be affected by many different types of attenuation and for the noises. We see here that with regards to the attenuation, we see that the attenuation due to cables on the path, the attenuation due to connections on the path, the attenuation due to coupling if the phase used for the communication is not the same in the meter and the data concentrator, and the attenuation and the phase due to changes of impedances on the path. And then also we see here that noises, electrical noises are also an important issue when those are generated by devices connected in the network. When the signal is received by the meter, the spectrum is a degraded signal. If noises are very high in the same frequencies than the communication, the degradation can be enough to avoid the understanding of the PLC signal. When these noises are analyzed, we have to take into account that noises change along the time and change in frequency in a continuous way. If we take a measurement of the noise between phase and neutral voltage in a specific point of the network, we can discover that the main value of the noise in a frequency range changes, changes in dozens of dBs from one hour of the day to others. This normally happens because the loads in the network are completely different from some hours to others. In the example here that we can see, the noise is very low during the night, but is very high during the working hours. Although this is a typical example, it is not the only pattern that we have registered and that we can see. If we pick up one of the moments with high levels of electrical noise and we analyze its frequency response, we will discover that some frequencies have very high levels of noise and others all frequencies have much more lower levels. The frequency response changes along the time, but some frequencies produced by some machines, normally some uncontrolled devices, can appear repeatedly as the most relevant noises in a specific network. Again, we have to understand that noises are changing along the day. The PLC communications will be successful in valley hours here represented it in the, in, the, in the green line. The PLC communications will be problematic in peak hours. This does not mean that PLC communications are impossible during the peak hours, but probably the communication must be more robust in the peak hours than in the valley hours. And depending on the technology, these communications could be slower. If we analyze the frequency response in one specific moment, we can detect also some peak frequencies and valley frequencies. The frequencies with high noise levels are bad frequencies or at least not recommended for the transmission of PLC signals. And the frequencies with low noise level, we could say that are good for the transmission of PLC signals. Although noises are changing continuously, the patterns of the noises can be analyzed in a network to check which frequencies are the best or the most suitable for the communication. So if we combine the analysis in time and in frequency, we could then have a very good picture of the best moments and frequencies to communicate. Here you can see in, in green color in the left sides of the, of, the, of the slides, the hours of the day which are more promising to avoid 
problems with the PLC communication. On the right uh, side of the picture, you can see here the graphic with the frequencies, and then in green light, you can see which frequency bands are more suitable for the PLC communications. So now that we are exposing different technical aspects related to electrical noises, the question here would be how the electrical noises could impact my project of smart metering. And moreover, could be this impact very significant? Well, the answer is not easy since the expected impacts are very much related to the network itself. From our experience built up by working with PLC systems in more than 10 different countries, is that in all cases, there is a clear impact of noises over the communication of meters. However, as I said earlier, the number of meters affected is very different from one country to another. In very modern grids, we reported incidents by noises of around one up to 3%. In less developed grids, this affection can reach more than 20% of the meters. So if we consider the number of meters in a massive rollout, let's say millions of meters, even a poor affection of only 2% of the meters looks pretty huge. The extra costs due to noises are generally related to the lack of communication of a significant percentage of meters deployed. And this is also related to the need of conducting manual billing of the affected customers and the, the need of the introduction of filters in those users that are thought to be responsible of the appearance of electrical noises. It is important to remark here that those extra costs are generally not taken into account in the feasibility studies of a smart metering project. And in some occasions, those extra costs may put in danger the whole feasibility of the project. The good news are that having in mind noise problems beforehand is something reachable in both in technically and economically. Doing some work for understanding how and where the noises are in our grid is pretty cheap and affordable when considering a smart metering project. Thus, the investment of those studies is absolutely worth and will save a lot of problems and money in the future. Once it is clear the importance of considering the electrical noises in our grid, the question is how we could reduce the negative impact of those noises in our smart metering project. Well, first of all, we have to differentiate the stage in which our project is at this very moment. We could be in earlier stages where big decisions are taken or in a middle or ending stages, let's say when pilots are ongoing or where the deployment of the massive rollout is being done. The best situation would be for those projects that have just started and where big decisions could consider the potential impact of noises in the project. In those situations, the best decision could be to perform electrical noise mapping of different sites of the area affected by the project. That could give us a good picture of our grid, and thus we could take some important decisions to minimize the potential problem of electrical noises. Such, such decisions could affect the use of one or several communication technologies, such as PLC, RF, narrowband IoT, uh, in different geographical areas. In PLC, this information could help us in deciding which system could offer better performance. We see that we have GIST 3 PLC, we have Prime, we have meters and more. And most important, which frequency bands look more promising to reduce the impact of noises? And last but not least, which time from a day is best to proceed in compiling data and communicate with the meters. If we are already running a smart metering project and we have already some pilots ongoing, or we have already accomplished a relevant percentage of the massive rollout, we will probably have reported some communication problems due to electrical noises. In such situations, 
there could be the need to look for a solution that could find out where the noises comes from. Let's say, which is the meter responsible of the noises that is affecting many other meters. This tool or this system should be easy to use and more important, should be fast in detecting the origin of the noise. And of course, fast means less costly. From these findings, the normal solution should be to introduce filters in those customers that show more presence of noises. Even if we have already installed a huge number of meters, considering the possibility to undertake a fast study to learn about the presence and type of electrical noises in our grid could be also a very interesting idea. The outcomes of those studies, let's say uh, noise mapping, could help us in improving on or in optimizing the full system and thus reduce the incidence of noises in our meters. Like in the slide we saw before, knowing our noise levels, frequency bands and day and night rates could help us in introducing some small changes in the system. For instance, in changing the schedule of the communication of the meters during the day. And moreover, in future acquisition of new meters, we could think in changing the frequency bands that those meters use to communicate. Once finished these basic concepts of power line communications, we will go through the methodology to analyze the suitability of the technology. Previously to the selection of a PLC technology by the utility, it is very much recommended to conduct an analysis of the electrical disturbances that are present in our networks. And this will be very helpful to ensure that the technology, the selected frequency bands and the expected timing to collect the data are affordable. The electrical noises that are in a network could be contrary to the use of a specific technology. The electrical noises could also limit the frequencies to use or could limit the time we want to use to collect the data. Each network is different and the noises they can have can be different too. In Technalia, we have a collection of noises from electrical distribution networks from Spain, from Brazil, from Saudi Arabia, from Qatar, from Lebanon. And the result of this analysis is completely different depending on the country and its network. If we take as an example, the main power line technologies that have been promoted by European utilities during the last 10 years, we can discover the evolution towards solutions with wider and more configurable frequency ranges. The first solution was meters and more, implementing a single carrier technology. Then Prime Alliance promoted the specification 1.3.6 that used a frequency band between 42 and 90 kilohertz. Later, G3 PLC Alliance promoted a solution using also frequencies between 30 and 95 kilohertz, a band very similar to that used by Prime, but also in but it also included a second band between 150 and 480 kilohertz to get a higher speed in the communication. Finally, in these narrow band technologies, Prime Alliance is using now an eight band system that allows the selection of one or several frequency bands, depending on the previous analysis done by the utilities. This configurable system could be applied in the future in a smart way, combined with a real-time analysis of the noises. Examples in this analysis explain the narrow band power line technologies, but the analysis could be applied in a similar way for other bands. Okay, let's continue uh, now explaining point number three, which is the methodology to find where the noises come from. The utilities have to take into account that electrical disturbances over PLC communications are similar to radio frequency disturbances over cellular communications. The effects are the same, 
the limitation of the communications during some moments. So the methodologies applied to solve the problems are aligned with the methodologies used in rabbit frequency. Even when in a previous analysis or in pilot projects, disturbances have not been detected, the noises can appear later. When we analyze the noises in a specific network, we can detect some noises that appear in several points of the network. A typical example is a cabinet with electrical meters. We can detect the same noise in different meters, and the first problem is how to detect where the noise comes from. In 99% of the cases, the noises comes from a load that is connected by one of the users. This noise goes to the network through the meter that is connected to this user, but once the noise has passed through the meter, this noise can be detected in any place of the cabinet and even in other cabinets. The noise will be attenuated by the cables, but in short distances, this attenuation will be very small. And considering that the noises are changing, it can be very tricky and difficult to detect the source. If we are able to detect the source of the noise, we could apply a filter to isolate the noise. The question is, how can we detect the source of the noise? And especially, how can we do that without bringing problems to the user or doing it fast and cheap? Analyzing how the noise flows, we can see that almost all the noises comes from a specific phase. Considering three phases, R, S and T, and the neutral, we could measure the noises between each phase and neutral or between two phases. When we measure between phase and neutral, theoretically, we can select the cable that goes to the load or the cable that goes to the network indistinctly. In the example in this picture, the noise level that we can measure is the same between RA and NA than between RB and NB. They are almost the same electrical points, so the obtained values are very, very similar. And the obtained value is also the same whether the noise comes from the load or the noise comes from the network. But what happens if we measure the voltage between RA and RB? It is supposed to be almost the same electrical point. We only have between them the internal components that allow the measurement, and these components have to minimize the loss in 50 Hertz and 60 Hertz. But these components have not been designed to minimize the loss in the PLC frequencies. So there is a loss between RA and RB in the PLC frequency range. So if signals go through these two points, the signal will be attenuated. And not only this, if the noise comes from the load, the attenuation in these components will be higher than if it comes from the network. So we can say which is the phase with the noise and which is the meter with the noise in its loads, only analyzing this voltage loss between the two points of each phase. This methodology is deeply explained in the patent registered by Technalia and called Noisic. We can offer a device that has implemented this methodology and which allows the detection of the source of a noise over 60 smart meters in less than one hour. Nevertheless, the methodology can be implemented also over final devices, for example, inside the smart meters, in order to detect automatically by each meter, the presence of noises that produce problems in power line communications. The application of this methodology inside the smart meters will allow the improvement of the rates of successful communications dramatically. And now to end this technical webinar, we will go through some services provided by Technalia through the device called Noisic. The explained methodologies and the different analyses that have been presented in this webinar could be done by using traditional tools, but 
which need high experienced technicians and quite a lot of time to perform those analyses. Noisy is presented as an alternative, not only because with the same device you can use both methodologies, the one to find out where the noise comes from and the one to perform electrical noise mapping to analyze the suitability of the technology to use. But also, thanks to the way Noisic is presented, you don't need high skills or very experienced technicians to work with it. And moreover, the time needed to perform the analysis is pretty much shorter. Noisic is composed by a device and a web application. The device it's used to take the data in field and to detect directly in field where the noise comes from, while the web application is very useful because it represents all the data in a very simple and very easy to interpret graphics and figures. The web application that supports noisic devices allows the analysis of G bytes of data related to noises that the noisic device can store in the real network, acting like a sort of data logger. The data can be analyzed to understand the problems due to noises based in three parameters, time, frequency, and geographical place. The analysis in time comparing dozens of points from the same or different secondary substations can help to decide which is the best moment for the communication in each secondary substation. The analysis in frequency that we can see in this picture, comparing dozens of peaks can help to decide which is the best technology and which is the best frequency band to be used for the power line communications. So is Prime better than G3 PLC? Well, the analysis with gigabytes of data can help you to take this decision. The analysis by place or ge geographical area, comparing dozens of points from the same or different secondary substations can help to decide whether the same solution is applicable or not in every place in the region or in the network. Indeed, the most important decisions of a, a smart metering project and that which will affect to the feasibility and global results of it should be taken with robust scientific data. And as a matter of fact, that's why Noisic exists, to provide in a reliable, in a fast and a cheap way, the necessary data to take important decisions. And with this uh, final message, uh, we arrived at the end of this technical webinar called Noise Problems in PLC Communications. Uh, I hope you have uh, enjoyed uh, with us this webinar and I really thank you for attending. Uh, and now uh, I will let my colleague Ivona Richalde, uh, he will try to answer all the questions written in the platform during the webinar. And I also share with you our email addresses so that you can send also your private questions to us and we will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you very much again and all the best and, and, and be safe. Take care, bye. Thank you very much, Oriol, for the explanation and the, the presentation that you have shared with us. Uh, only uh, when we now we are going to pass to the to the time for questions and answers. Uh, as the mission is in the streaming and, and we have some delay, uh, we will wait uh, one one minute. Uh, to to be able to to read all the questions and and to and to answer them, and and well, in, uh, so well, I, I collect the, the questions and in one minute we we try to answer. Uh,
Okay. Uh, the, fir the first question that I have is, uh, could we apply uh, these technologies uh, or these methodologies for the measurement of the, of the noises to higher frequencies? Because we have been talking about the, the narrowband PLC communications and the question is about higher frequencies. Um, okay, uh, I understand that the question is related to the the broadband uh, power line communications that are evolving also, uh, not only the narrow band uh, are evolving, also the, the broadband PLC communications are evolving. And, and really, uh, these two methodologies that we have seen uh, are applicable uh, both in lower frequencies or in higher frequencies. Uh, the difference uh, when we apply this uh, up to 500 kilohertz and, and when we apply in over uh, 2 megahertz is that the sensitivity that we need in the devices that, uh, that, we, that we use are quite different. Uh, so uh, the, the actual noise for example, that is designed up to 500 kilohertz is uh, a quite simple device uh, with with a typical sensitivity and for higher frequencies if we are talking about uh, 50, 50 megahertz for example we will need a more sensitive uh, device to do that uh, in the case of the methodology to analyze the best time the best frequency and the best place uh, is uh, the methodology is the same in, in any frequency. In the case of the methodology to detect where a noise comes from, it's very, very relevant this, uh, this question about the sensitivity of the, of the device. Okay. Uh, yes, we see another question that is uh, about how can be applied uh, this methodology? I understand that it's related to the methodology of the detection of where a noise comes from. Uh, how can be applied uh, in meters? Well, uh, the question is that uh, the points that are used for the measurement are points that are connected to the meter. And each, uh, and really for the for the detection of the, uh, for the communication for the power line communication one of the these points is always used so really we only have we only need uh, a connection in another point that is not normally used for the communications so in this case uh, in a meter that want to apply this uh, uh, this methodology we will need uh, a small redesign of the of the connection uh, to be able to process the information that is in the point that nowadays uh, is not uh, used for the communications. This is something that uh, some uh, chip manufacturers already know, and well, it's it's, it's quite easy for them. Uh, of course, it's a change in design, and it's quite relevant. Uh, to do that if uh, then they have a market and, uh, and the utilities uh, understand the value of, of this uh, change. But, but of course, it's very easy to implement in a chipset, and so it's very easy to implement in the meter. Well, uh, I have another question that is, if we offer this uh, Noisic as a product or as a service or both? Well, um, we try not to sell mm, the product it itself uh, and to offer as a service, but a service that can be provided by us or can be provided by a manufacturer or by a, a maintenance company that is working for the utility. So really as a service because uh, well, we, we, we have to do some uh, and that analysis in the in the platform in the Noisic application, but uh, well, it's, it's something that is so. It's not only to sell a product, but uh, it's 
quite easy to to well, to 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 get a, um, a collaboration with a maintenance company. But uh, in the case of the of the implementation in the in the meters or in the chipsets, well, this is also a collaboration that will be done with the manufacturer. Uh, another question is uh, how much time is it required to gather enough information to obtain a relevant result for a site or location? OK, we have had uh, several experiences. Uh, we had a project uh, in Latin America with a lot of points, more than 100 points and um, small times in measurement and this was not very effective and we have some other uh, places where we have had a, a, the, the measurement uh, applied during one week per place uh, if the utility wants to know which is the best time to make the communication uh, you need at least one week per place because you need to be able to catch every change along the week in the different hours. If this is the objective, we need this. Um, if the objective is to analyze which is the best frequency band to use, uh, then the, here in this case, uh, the measurements can be uh, faster because probably you can go to specific places where the already the utilities know that they can have some problems. So it is uh, depending on the objective of the of the evaluation, well, the, the, the measurements can be longer or not. Uh, but well, this is dependent on the project. Uh, we have another question. But I will try to to see. Okay, here. I understood that I can measure the noise source without disconnecting the power supply of the customer. How can I measure that with the noise seek? Just really, the noise seek is uh, a device to to be used uh, without any change in the in the customer installation in the customer facility and really this is one of the of the things that are good because uh, in the past we we were in some projects where we had to to go uh, to the to the cabinet with the meters but probably in some countries you when when you are going to to make a work in, in this place you have to uh, to send a message to the people that is living in this place that you are going to work. And, and this was a problem because uh, when you have to give these messages, the people is normally changes their way to do the things uh, to avoid problems with the with the electrical supply. And, and in this case with the noise you can go and you can connect and disconnect the noise without any change in the in the facility, without any power down. So you can do all the work and you can do all the analysis uh, without problems. Um, OK. Uh, well, I think that we have not more questions because we have a, another uh, person that has written has been writing the uh, well uh, some congratulations about the uh, about the webinar uh, and, well, and but we have not, no more questions so well only uh, to summarize uh, the webinar we we have been talking about the um, the basic concepts of the PLC communications and the noises in the network we have been talking about the methodologies to analyze the best time, the best frequency and, and, and how to select these 
uh, according to the place where where really the the PLC communications are working. Uh, we have been talking also about the methodology to detect where noise come from in an easy way and very, very fast. And we have uh, shared with you some solutions. So, well, uh, we have no more questions. Uh, thank you very much to all the attendants uh, for for your presence in this in this webinar. Thank you to Oriol also for the explanations. Uh, you have uh, in the slide the emails uh, to connect to Oriol or to me to to ask more information. And, and well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.